And now we present to you America's quintessential iconoclastic anomaly. Wow. In talk radio, your host, Joe Cristiano. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the University of Logic, better known as Cristiano's Conservatory, correcting convoluted conversations. And that's exactly what we have been doing. And that's exactly what we will be doing this morning. Uh, you know, I, uh, I have to make a proclamation this morning. I have to be honest to my listeners. I am declaring myself clinically insane. I am. I'm, I've decided I, I am clinically insane. There's, there's no two ways about it. I've looked at this from absolutely every angle. The only conclusion, pfft, I'm gone. It's over. My mind is uh, toast. I'm clinically insane. Now you ask, you say, well, you know, if you were clinically why would a big successful station like 1170 KFAQ have me as a broadcast host? You know, why, why would they have me in? Why wouldn't they fire me, throw me out? Well, I found the answer to that question because I, that bothered me also. A lot of things bother me these days. In fact, too many things bother me. And I found out that in their personnel manual, there is no chapter on firing, firing someone for clinical insanity. They're writing it now as we speak. I may be gone soon. That's why I'm still here. You ask, well, how did I come to this conclusion? Well, it seems that it's enough that I disagree with the people on the left, the people on the right, and the people in the middle. It's, it's okay. If I just, but when I start disagreeing with those people heretofore had proclaimed themselves as somewhat libertarian in nature. Not part of the Libertarian Party, but libertarian in nature in that they believe in total freedom. In other words, do what you want, provided you do not infringe upon the equal rights of others. When I start disagreeing with that group, you know I have had a real problem. Now, the definition of insanity is very simple. That's when you think you're right and the rest of the world is wrong. And it almost seems, folks, and I'll be honest with you, it seems that I'm walking around thinking that I'm right and about everyone that I listen to is wrong. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. They surprised me, these clowns in the studio, I'll tell you this. But it, 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 it's really, and it, it's really starting to worry me. I said, now... I can't go around saying that, hey, I'm right. You know, the rest of the world is wrong. Ha, 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 ha. Listen to me. I have to, t I have to be honest with you. If, in fact, the definition of insanity is that you believe you're right and the rest of the world is wrong, you're insane. You're listening to an insane person. Maybe you should switch off and listen to, uh, what's her name, R Rachel Maddow or somebody like that. Or maybe Sean Hannity or somebody like that. Th they will make more sense to you than me. Because I, I get so concerned about this country, not the people, the government. I worry about the way we think, the way we thought years ago and the way we think today. And, and let me tell you what, what clipped the switch. I clipped, flipped the switch, excuse me, it's too early. Flipped the switch on my insanity plea. I was listening to, and I won't mention any names. I try not. I try to avoid unless I'm going to compliment someone to heck. But I'm listening to a talk show host that I have quite a bit of uh, respect for. It's very good, excellent. I mean, you know, syndicated worldwide, and uh, it pro proclaimed libertarian or libertarian in 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 philosophy, and he's talking about this uh, Navy SEAL, Cliff Hyde who had a funeral, now listen to this, folks, in Cowboy Stadium. When I die, they're going to have my funeral a Quick Trip. And not the main place, I mean the local store, you know? And there'll be plenty of room for you to go to the ATM. Don't worry, you don't have to worry about that. I mean, Cowboy Stadium, isn't that amazing? So you say, well, geez, what was it about this person that elevated this person, you know, this person's um, appeal to people, that this concern that he's no longer with us, that respect, that he would have to have a rent out basically Cowboy Stadium for a funeral. Well, the logic was this: is that he he killed a hundred and six, oh no, six, 16 or hundred and sixty. What? One hundred and sixty-eight. Something like that. Uh, 
you know, uh, insurgents or whatever. He was a true hero. In fact, in fact, he was declared a warrior and family man. I heard that. I snapped. It was all over. My car went off the road, went into a ditch. It was over. Life was over as I knew. A warrior and a family man. Now, for, for some reason, folks, and excuse me for being a radical, I have a difficult time connecting family man and warrior. When I hear warrior, what do I think of? I think of Attila the Hun charging, going into a village and decapitating everybody. You know, uh, raping the woman, enslaving the children, killing the men. That's warrior. Oh, and by the way, Attila Hun was a great family man. <laughs> now, do, 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 we, do we have a problem in this country? Do we have a problem with this, uh, this hegemony of America? You know, this, this schizophrenic way of thinking. That's, it's got to be schizophrenic. The schizophrenic hegemony of, of American greatness. That we can take someone who is being prized for killing other human beings on this planet. Now, let me clarify something. Because I know people are going to be turning off and saying, I'll never listen to this madman again, and I don't blame you. I can understand if we, we are sitting here and not bothering anyone, and all of a sudden a group, whatever it is, what country, I don't care, what it is, a group armed comes and invades us. Looking for guns or ammo? What was that for? That was called a mistake. Oh, I was okay. So excited <laughs> about right. listening to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. You have to. Well, you understand <laughs> that, you know, and people start charging in. You know, uh, we're all warriors at that point. If my grandmother, who's in a wheelchair, she gets my old ni 1903 Springfield 30 odd six, and she'll be using it. Everyone. She doesn't need to have a license at that point. She doesn't have to go to boot camp. She'll be in the front window. She'll be popping people off. She'll be a war. At that point, we become warriors. No, no. We're, correction. We become defenders of our country, provided we did not provoke the attack. Listen to this, folks. Now, we have someone who goes overseas and is told or learns through the grapevine, through whatever they are, they are, their system is, that this person is an insurgent. Right? This person is antagonist towards the United States. Oh, however, the, whatever beautiful wording they use, and I'm sure they use tougher words than that. I have to be on radio. I have to comply with certain FCC ro ro rulings. All right? Now, guy gets no trial whatsoever, but we know whatever his name is, you know, this guy is plotting and he's part of the Taliban, whatever that means. He's part of Al-Qaeda, whatever that means, you know. And so he decides this person needs to be taken out. Or someone decides for him, which is even worse, needs to be taken out. The guy is a marksman. Uh, he can take somebody out at 100 yards, no problem. And he kills 160-some-odd people. He's a warrior. I don't think so. I'm sorry. That's not my definition of a warrior. A warrior is someone who stands up and says, okay, let's duke it out. Not standing behind some sandbags and then a half a mile away blowing someone's head off. Not a warrior. But it's immaterial what he is. Is that he kills another human being without trial by jury. On hearsay. Now, that's his job. I'm not blaming him. I'm blaming the system, and the system is here. The system is in. The system operates. The system is alive and kicking because of our mentality. Instead of filling up Cowboy Stadium, we should be rioting. We should be protesting and saying, this is wrong. This person has been indoctrinated to believe that he did good for America. And he did no good. All he did was create an aura of hate overseas. 
by any definition that will create more dissidents. Now listen, folks, what if, what if some troops from another country and you fill in the blank, I care not what country you pick, and they were rampant over our country because they were looking for some bad guys. They were looking for some bad guys, okay? And I don't care. You make the definition. Don't care what it is. Now, all of us are saying, we want these troops out of here. And we get together some Sunday night and we say, you know, we have to do something about this. All of a sudden, we're all labeled as insurgents, dissidents, and we're part of the um, American radical movement or whatever they want to call us. G give, give me a name. Home I need grown, a name. Homegrown terrorist. Yeah, we're homegrown terrorist movement, okay? And each one of us get picked off. We didn't do anything. We didn't kill anybody. But we are plotting to see how we can get rid of these troops, get them off our, our, our land. They pick us off. They go back to their country, they're heroes. They are great warriors and family men. You see, the problem that we have in this country is that we, 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 we believe whatever we can do is okay. Are we almost here for a break? Because I need some coffee to calm down. Thank you. We, we think whatever we do here, we, we have our own definition. We have a dictionary. You can't have this dictionary because it only applies to me. It doesn't apply to you. If I translate that same word, it, it's different for you than it is for me. In other words, I'm, I'm right, you're wrong. We have a country that is as insane as I am, thinking that I'm right and everybody else is wrong. And that exactly means that this country is insane and we better do something about it. Let's take a break. You know, folks, uh, it, supporting those people who support this station supports the movement of liberty. It's a very simple formula. And I'm not just saying that just glib and uh, this radio talk. I support each one of our sponsors, people who advertise in this program. So should you. And if you are interested in advertising on this program, it's a good deal because it's not expensive. And those people who listen are loyal to the, to the program and loyal to those people who support the program. And when we say that, we're saying those people who support liberty. Buy from those people who support keeping this country free. I, for example, I love to go to McCool's Firearms on 31st Street. I'm not like going there. Go there. You know why? Because they're friendly. They're helpful. I can go there and not buy anything and they don't throw me out. Some other places, if you go there and you don't buy something, yeah, can I help you? Can you want to buy something? You know, it's not that way. I have a problem, a question, something that's bugging me about one of my firearms. They bring it in. They'll talk to you about it. They're great people. I really su suggest if you have any questions about firearms, you have, been, you have never owned one, you want to know what to do, go see Larry at McCool's. I mean, it's, it's a great place to go. I mean, it's a really a good place to go, right? And, boy, they have some really strange-looking weapons there. <laughs> you know, they have a, a, on the wall, they have a rocket launcher that I want to buy, but they said it's been disabled. I was very disappointed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I st uh, and, and, and all tech, you know, they, they put a camera in your house also as well as the, an, an alarm system. Uh, really make you secure because things may get really, really bad. And also today I want to announce that uh, there is an Oklahoma preppers meeting. It's the Tulsa chapter. It's meeting at 1.30 p.m. today. This is Hardesty. Sunday, Hardesty right, at the Hardesty Library. And All Tech Fire and Security, the spon one of the sponsors of this program, will be giving a presentation. So be there at the Hardesty Library, 1.30, Tulsa Chapter of the Oklahoma Preppers. Okay, see you there. I will be there. Uh, by the way, I stand corrected. During the advertisements, the break, uh, I was told that Chris Hyde himself was actually opposed to a, a, a sniper attacks. In other words, killing people or other insurgents, if you will, or enemies, uh, enemy combatants, or whatever you want to call them these days, um, uh, just randomly or just by order. So I applaud him for that. He was primarily involved in the killing of those who initiated an attack 
on him, on, on his group. And that's what made him so popular. So I stand corrected. Now, folks, let me tell you, this is not easy to do, to profess something and then all of a sudden say, hey, guys, I was just wrong. I'm, I'm eating all my words, but in a sense, I am not. Because the principle is still the same. And I applaud, by the way, Chris Hyde for taking that position. Very, very much. So you can save the, the e emails and the calls for that. And by the way, I'd like to hear your opinion at 855-866-1170. Call in if you'd like, 855-866-1170. And please, if you're going to call and you disagree with me, tell me, I want to learn from you. This is a com community in which we all learn from one another. I'm no guru. I'm just the guy with the attitude. I'm the guy with the microphone. You know, I'm the guy with the voice. That's all, you know. But yeah. I learn from you, and believe me, I learn every single day. And when I'm wrong, I'm gonna, I want to make sure I tell you I was wrong. And that's a real problem that we have with this country. People die being wrong. I don't want to die being wrong. I want to live being right. There's a difference, all right? And send me your emails to comments at libertytalkradio.com, all right? All right? Although I applaud what Chris Hyde had done, his attitude towards it, it still begs the question, why are we in a foreign country with our troops, drone attacks, heavy equipment, heavily uh, 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 well-trained soldiers seeking out citizens of that country who have not had a trial and picking them off? Now, if there were soldiers on our soil, would we not coalesce into some sort of army? I mean, we wouldn't announce it because we don't want to get knocked off, but we would all psychologically be in the revolutionary army, freeing America from the occupants, whatever they are, you, but fill in the blank, you know, the Balkans, <laughs> I'll make it up, the, uh, you know, I, whatever, whatever you want to make. But we would all be in that army. I mean, and even if we never took up arms, mentally, we would be that way. The question is, why don't we think that way? Why do we think that we are privileged to a point where we can go to another country, do whatever we want, whatever we want, but God forbid, God forbid, <laughs> they come here, cross this imaginary, politically derived demarcation, this line, come here to pick lettuce for us at practically no wages whatsoever, for wages we would not tolerate, and yet they're criminals. And we hunt them down and throw them out. Just think of that. I want you, I want you to stop, every, stop thinking about everything. We have a caller. Call just stay on the air for a second. It is okay for us to send an entire army over to another sovereign country, bomb them, kill innocent people. When you, when you bomb the, an area, you know, with a drone attack, men, women, children get killed. Take out purportedly people who we think are anti-U.S., which should probably all of them, but, I mean, whoever we pick out, kill them, and we are privileged to do that. Now, uh, let, me, let me take this call. I'm, I'm going to finish my, my, co my comment on that. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, thanks for taking the call. I'm Rick, Thank you. Uh, from here in Tulsa. I have a couple things to say. First off, uh, it's better to declare yourself clinically insane than to have others do that for you, I would say. So, <laughs> 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 I think that's... I think it's wise that you did that. So. Well, thank you so much. I mean, I feel better. It's like a cleansing. I just went to. I feel like I just went to confession, you know. <laughs> but I feel that way. Truly, I. And I, I, I don't know. You might want to write it down, but I, I have uh, seen a video on YouTube of a man named Robert Pape, and his presentation is called "Dying to Win," and he's a professor at the University of Chicago, uh, really well respected, and. What you're saying, what you're asking, the question you're asking is, why on earth do we think that we have the right to do these things? Well, 
I mean, after 9-11, they had a, a really um, great excuse for these actions. You know, we were trying to protect our countries and stuff like that. But um, at this point, I don't know. I mean, I don't even notice them ever saying that really anymore. What they really are talking about is protecting our strategic interests and obligations. That's always what that's they right. say. Yeah, that's nice. It sounds yeah. good, doesn't it? That's like Right. My business. Well, yeah, no, actually it doesn't sound good because, I mean, even if you just parse that out, if, if you actually have a brain in your head, I mean, that's a pretty lame excuse. But beyond that, what that's what people need to ask themselves first and foremost is what, what are our strategic interests and obligations and who do they benefit? You know what I mean? Are they really beneficial to our safety and security or are they more or less beneficial to incredibly powerful corporations? And I mean, obviously, I could, it, the question answers itself. But the thing in, in his presentation that I think is, is um, crucial is that he points out that essentially suicide terrorism is, is 100% pretty much caused by um, people who are upset because they're they're land is occupied by foreign foreign right. troops. So, I mean, and he, not only does he say that, but he actually proves it with with uh, incredible research that they've put together. They have a database of basically every suicide terror event that has happened since the late 80s when it became uh, a popular strategy by these so-called jihadists. And, I mean, you know, they have a, very, they have a more detailed database on these events than the CIA itself. So, um, and actually, an admiral in the Navy is starting to adopt, adopt his, um, his strategy and his, his actions. Unfortunately, his, um, his solution isn't to stop doing it per se. He wants to uh, basically move it all offshore and not have troops on the ground. Yeah. Which I disagree with that solution. But yeah, right. regardless, the, the, the first part of that is so crucial for people to understand and uh, I just wanted to point that out. It's, it's Robert Pace dying to win. All you have to do is look that up on YouTube. It's a it's an absolutely fascinating presentation. Yeah, did you is that Pace P A C E or Tate? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. No, it's it's P A P E. P A oh P oh okay P A P E okay. Yeah, and I just wanted to bring that to your attention. No, I appreciate that. No, actually, yeah, I'm I'm sure you're very popular also, right, among your friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I am. You know what I mean. <laughs> well, what do you belong to a group that's uh, that actually feels that way? Because I I find I find it really difficult finding many people who with that mentality. I, I, I appreciate your call and I agree with everything you have said. By the way, but um, yeah. it, it's interesting. I don't tend to I don't tend to try to put myself in any group. It's not healthy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you know if you're ever free, you should visit us. We're going to start broadcasting live. By the way, and out of Agora Coffee Shop. Yeah, uh, the really? internet program, just the internet program. We'd love to have 1170 KFAQ there if they would just spend a couple of hundred million dollars and, and get their studio over there, you know. But they, they're too cheap, <laughs> yeah, well. you know. But, uh, uh, you know, we're going to start doing that. We're going to be roaming around the city. And if you're ever there, we're going to start on Wednesdays. We're not sure exactly. In the next couple of weeks, we'll be there on Wednesday morning, 730. And, um, you know, we're just going to have okay. a live broadcast. So you'll join us. Uh, and also, by hey. the way, for the, your, your calling in, I'd like to... Um, award you with a uh, Liberty Talk Radio T-shirt if you'll send me an email with your mailing address and T-shirt size. I'd be happy to send you one. And do you have something else to say? Yeah, I can do. I, I was going to ask, what was the name of the coffee shop again? Agora, A-G-O-R-A. It's in the Fontana Shopping Center at uh, 51st and Memorial. It's the coffee shop hey, impos impossible to find, by the way. I, I yeah, it's in the I back got. side of the yeah. Fontana Shopping Center there. Yeah. It's a real neat place, and we're going to start using that as our ro one of our roaming studio places. Thank yeah, and so we'll, we'll, be, we'll be announcing that soon also, as soon as the exact date and stuff like that. Just stay tuned, okay? You got it. Okay, Rick, thank you so much for calling. Bye-bye now. Okay, are we, are we ready for a break now again? Okay, here we go, folks. Don't go away. I want to finish up this conversation. Not finished yet. Thank you. I want to finish the conversation. I don't, you know, but half the time I, uh, we go to break. When I come back, I open a new conversation 
when I get home, I get, what the heck, why, you didn't even finish your thought. And here is my thought, and I want to get back to my original conversation, by the way. Will someone remind me the original conversation? I always forget. But uh, here we are, you know, it's USA, USA, USA. It's okay for us to do whatever we want someplace else. Now, the, 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 the country that comes to mind, country that comes to mind, uh, with that mentality, and you're not going to like this, folks. You're not going to like it at all, right? It's whom, right? Uh, Adolf Hitler, right? Nazi Germany, right? They had the rights to everything. His mentality is the Germans were the race. I mean, they were the superior race, and everyone else, to some sort of degree, was inferior. And, you know, we, we learned that in school. We think, isn't that horrible? We Our teachers who for the most part are wonderful people, but mindless when it comes to history, we teach that. Now, the teachers should be standing there and say, do you know, Hitler professed that, but guess what, kids? So do we. And we're worse than them because at least he was open about it. He said, I'm better than you. And listen, you can be wrong and at least admit it and tell me it, but not color it up, not flavor it. We flavor it. You see, we don't say we're better than anyone else. We say we care for everyone. We must be kind and gentle. We, we must care for the children. And then we go kill them. We're worse than the Nazis. The Nazis, at least we're honest about it. Say, we're coming to your country, we're killing everybody. Well, you're not, not a very good idea. Don't like it. I think there's something moral and illegal about it. But that's another issue. But what we do is we lie, cheat, and steal, and then wind up doing the same thing. How could anyone in this country... Actually, go home at night, sleep at night, and say, "Oh, God bless America." And think of that stupid comment: "God bless America." You think God already blessed America? They gave us natural resources, gave us oceans on both sides. I mean, isolated us from all the garbage that's going on in the Middle East and in Europe and in Asia and in South America. We were isolated. We had it all. God said, "Here it is. You've got it, folks. Bless you." And guess what we did? We screwed it up. And then we say, God bless America. How dare we say that? I mean, anyone who says that, I'm pronouncing it. Anyone who says that from now on is going to hell. <laughs> right? Since I'm being a preacher at this point, you say, God bless America, you're going to hell. There's a special room. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, and that's awesome, you know? All you guys are clowns, I'm going to another radio station. I can't stand you people anymore. <laughs> You know, please understand what I'm saying. Please don't send me any religious emails. I get tons of them with the, the this chapter and verse. Don't, please, please, save the ink. Save the b megabytes or whatever it is. Yeah, understand the principle behind it. In other words, we are doing exactly what the Nazis did. We can go there. We can bomb them. We can kill a lot of innocent men, women, and children. It's okay because, you see, folks, you don't seem to understand. They were just collateral damage. Now, let's go back for our commercial so we can go out and buy more crap made in some foreign country that we don't need and put ourselves in debt so we can pay the Federal Reserve more interest. Yes, what smart people we are. I want that to sink in. I almost feel like being quiet for... For 30 seconds, which is unheard of in t radio, three seconds and you're off the air. You know that. I like 30 seconds. So it sinks in. All right. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. My God, the guys, people are driving me crazy here. Is it okay I say amen? To hey, thank you, you very much. Our cameraman just said amen. We need Ernest Ainsley here. <laughs> Hey, let me tell you something. It's easy broadcasting, but broadcasting with these clowns is tough. I'll tell you that. It's really tough. But now let me go back to my original thought. We are glorifying this warrior. You cannot be a warrior and a family man. But see, all of a sudden we're saying warrior, family man, one and the same. Oh, if I want to be a good family man, i got to be a good warrior. I mean, it, it, it's just all my, after it sinks in, our mind starts thinking that way. We shouldn't be thinking that way. We should say, what's wrong with that? But we don't question anything because when we go to school, we're told not to question, to memorize, take the damn test, graduate, get a job, and, and pay up. your damn taxes. <laughs> shut up. And buy a lot of crap. We don't care if you can afford it or not. That's America. 
You know it, and I know that's exactly what we do. What we say, where we want to go, and where the what we do day to day to get there. Two different paths, diametrically opposed. You know that. I know that. And yet we do nothing about it. We just sit there, watch television, go, yeah, he's a hero, man. He's awesome. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah, or, yeah he's awesome. Excuse me. They tell him now they're teasing me. They say he's awesome, too. <laughs> All right. I'd like to hear from you. 855-866-1170. Let me hear from you. 855-866-1170. Your comments anytime to comments at libertytalkradio.com. You can visit our website, libertytalkradio.com, or you can find us on the 1170 KFAQ website as well. Um, you are now listening to the University of Logic, better known as Christiana's Conservatory for Correcting Convoluted Conversations. This is what we're here for. This is what we want to talk about. Um, our next subject, you know, last week, I want to finish last week's conversation. I talked about the Statue of Liberty. My wife reminded me of this. She said, you talked about the Statue of Liberty. You follow through. It, on it, it says something to the effect that give me your poor, your tired, your uh, huddled masses yearning to be free. I think that's about it, right? Now, just think, is that, is that what we mean? Give me your tired, your, 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 your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free? Anymore. <laughs> Anymore. I got a voice from the, yeah. That, that, that we, oh, no, no. We say uh, we want to be selective as to who we allow in here, and we'll interrogate the hell out of you. And once you're in here, if you want to get out, we're going to search you. We're going to do a body search. I mean, just think about what the, unfortunately, if we want to be honest, the Statue of Liberty really should be, taken down from where it is now and put in storage because it is a relic, a relic of a past that no longer exists today. How dare we have the Statue of Liberty and act the way we act towards foreigners, whether it's immigration policy or their natural resources, which really belong to us, USA, 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 because we're so stupid that we believe all the crap that we hear. Give me your tired, your poor. Listen, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free. I, I almost can cry when I hear that. And what do we do? We go overseas and we kill their tired. We kill their poor. We, kiddled, we kill the huddled masses yearning to be free. Just think of that. You know, people say in culture, we have cultures change. Do you know what changed culture? I'm going to give everyone a test. And really, 855-866-1170. By the way, my screen went blank. Is there a reason for that? Your uh, call screen? Yeah. Call screen. No, totally just uh, touch the keyboard there. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> okay. We have a ringy dingy. Okay. I think we have a ringy dingy. All right. Um, we're going to take, we'll take this call. Someone remind me. Because I forget. I, we I, I Yeah, where, where I was. Okay. Okay, and uh, okay, uh, we'll we'll take it. Uh, can we take this call? Oh, he's, he's on. Oh, he's on. He's on, he's on call. Go ahead, Joe. There okay. he is. Caller, you're on the air. Your first name, where you're calling from, and thank you for calling uh, Liberty Talk Radio on 1170 KFAQ. Well, let's just call me Jody for now. Okay, Jody. Good now. enough. I like the name. What's Why don't you give us some references on some of the stuff you're, you're uh, saying, some of the facts. A couple of weeks ago, you said something about 500,000 children died in Iraq. You know what? I couldn't find that anywhere. Well, I, I, I can't help. You know what? You're, you're right. You're, you're, Jody, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, I would have to do some research. Uh, when we attacked Iraq, there were untold numbers of people, and... And the, even the Pentagon will say, well, we believe now it's over a million. We don't even know. You're right. But you want to know something? It is immaterial. If it was one kid, it's the same. If it was well, one kid, one it would be the kid. same. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What about one kid on our side? That's just as bad. Okay. Just as bad. Well, no one should put, be dying. Put, put everything on the table. Yeah. Remember, we lost a lot of people at 9-11. Why? And I am ex-military. I know, but okay. why did we lose people I in 9-11? Vietnam. Where were you in Vietnam? Well, I, I, I actually, I enlisted for Vietnam. I enlisted to go to Vietnam. I did. Okay? Fair enough? Are we okay on that one? You're okay. 
I, yeah, I enlisted yeah, to go to Vietnam. Yeah. I enlisted to go, and I, I was not I was not taken because when I was young, when I was young, uh, Albie hit me in the head with a baseball back and gave me a concussion, and I wound up getting um, um, uh, seizures as a result. And uh, they found out about that, and they said, can't go. No, I'm, 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 I'm being, no one in the world knows that. You're the only person in the world that knows that. I really don't care. One well, I'm just saying, you asked me. You Did I go to Vietnam? I said no, I, okay. I, but I enlisted to go, and I, they wouldn't let me go. Okay, that's fine. The point I'm making is you're putting a lot of stuff out that may not be true, and you need to be very careful. There's a lot of people that agree with a portion of what you say. Okay. There's no, there's no there's good in agreeing with a portion. That's not good enough, all, George. All I'm asking is put facts out. Okay. Don't put your opinion out because your opinion is like everybody else. Everybody's got one. Some stink and some don't. Okay. Just put put out facts. Don't yeah. don't put out rhetoric. All right. No, no. Well, everything I have, everything I have is fact, and everything I have is principle. When I talk about is I talk about the principle of things. I talk about the principle of things. The, 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 when you talk about 9/11, the the only question that I ask, and we have to go to break. I'm sorry, but I'm going to make this quick. Is yes, we lost people on 9/11, but why did 9/11 occur? Ask, answer that question. Because of some of the political bull crap that goes on in this country that I don't agree with, possibly you don't agree with, but unfortunately, we have stupid people that vote. That's right. We we're, right. What, no, what do you mean by that? I mean people who do not educate themselves enough to learn about the individuals we're putting into office. I know, but we how, need to get back to the basics. What was the direct cause of 9/11? No, no. Uh, wait, hold on, uh, Jody. The direct cause of 9/11. The direct cause of 9/11 right. was more than likely our meddling in people's business. We didn't need to meddle in. Right. It's sort of that revenge, right? Agree. Okay, that's right. We're on the that same page. Does not give you the right to. Oh, bash the Americans that are standing for America and do live, love this country yeah. and do believe in this country. Okay. Go, uh, We've got some screwed up yeah. people running this place. I agree. But hey. Patriots that, are not the problem. All right, that, we we got to go. we got to break now, right? Do we have a break now? Okay, we got to break. Thank you so much for calling. Appreciate your comments. Also would like to thank Jody for calling and disagreeing. And he's disagreeing because he wants to make certain that what I tell you, and he's absolutely correct, that I do not spout out statistics or just hearsay, but that I am correcting what I say. Let me answer this this way. Well, by the way, Jody, if you are still listening, please send me an, an email to comments at LibertyTalkRadio.com. I will send you a Liberty Talk Radio t-shirt. Just indicate a mailing address and your t-shirt size. But let me make something clear about the conversation I just had with Jody, which I really appreciate. I don't want to hear yes people. I want to hear people contesting. It, it makes me a better person. It makes me clearer in, in my, my resolve. In that I'm not talking so much about events. Uh, you want events, you read about them. Yeah. I'm talking about philosophy. I'm thinking about the way we think. I'm thinking about, you know, the way our logic, our ment. My father used to say, "My mentality is a brain that does she no work." Right? My mentality, my brain does she no work. And what I have to say to America right now, quite frankly, and I, I'd probably be accurate to a large extent, is that my mentality, the brain does she no work. <laughs> That's all I am doing. Now, if I, if I said, oh, 540 people were killed and it was 320 or 790, it's really immaterial. And I, I apologize. I should have my facts correct. And I don't want to give a, a, a supporting detail just to make myself right. I don't want to do that. But I want to make sure the principle is there. Just as the people who attacked us on 9-11 didn't do it because they hate our freedom. That's that absolutely beyond stupidity. I can't even comment on it. Let's take a call. Ralph in Texas, Hello? welcome to Liberty Talk Radio on 1170 KFAQ. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, sir. And uh, with all due respect and with, with, with all 
understanding of perhaps where Jody is, and he's ex-military, and I've talked to a lot of ex-military, um, and I hope this is not too brash for some people, and please tone me down, but I have to say I'm a little bit frustrated. He was talking about having you to be accountable for facts and documentation, and that's good. But I didn't hear his facts or his documentation either. It was all his opinion. I didn't hear one documented thing that he said. But let me help folks, um, as I have been helped, about the uh, 9-11 issue. There is a company that has over a 1,000 architects or an organization that has over a 1,000 architects that will tell you the planes that crashed into uh, the two 9-11 buildings didn't bring the buildings down. There are uh, tons of firemen in New York, um, uh, some, of, a lot of which have died because of the chemicals coming out of the, out of the fire. But, however, uh, they will tell you it was a demolition job and there were bombs going off at every floor. The guy that was the uh, janitor of the building, uh, the, the gentleman that's now, I forget what country is in, hiding from America uh, to try to save his life, uh, he said that in the very beginning, before the planes ever hit, there were explosions in the basement. You've got to knock out those, those main uh, beams, right. vertical beams, um, to start the whole process, and then floor by floor by floor by floor on both buildings. Now let me help the audience understand building number seven. What happened to building number seven? It was so emotionally shocked over nine over the two twin towers that building number seven just gave up the ghost and fell down by its blessed self. Right. Um, all three of those buildings were owned by the same man who had the same responsibility of taking the asbestos out of the building. And, um, and it just so happened that Bush's brother was in there, what, two weeks earlier, um, setting, setting everything up. Who owns a demolition company? Yeah, you know, yeah, uh, 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 Ralph. Uh, just for a second, uh, I I was uh, pleased, to, uh, privileged to be in the same room with William Rodriguez, and he was the uh, superintendent of the building and spoke to him personally. Yeah. And uh, you hear his speech, and you know what? Something it was interesting. He lamb blasts no one. He just talks right. about what happened. I mean, he doesn't say right, wrong, right. He just tells what what happened. Uh, you know, he was given the um, Civilian Medal of Honor or something like that. And then as right. soon as he starts saying, well, no, it didn't really happen that way. Here's what I know. They took it away from him and they shunted him and he lost all his pension and everything. And the guy goes around yeah. talking about it, uh, making enough money to eat. Now, he's to me a hero. He because right. he is living his conviction. He is living. He wants to know. He wants the truth. And he's talking the truth at his expense. He did not have for lot. Thanksgiving. He did not have for Thanksgiving a meal that cost nine hundred dollars for two people. He probably goes to a, a convenience store and has a hot dog for ninety nine cents. <laughs> he is our true hero. But I agree with you. Well, I agree with you, Ralph. He, he finally had enough. I mean, he was a hero at first, and I think there was some conviction there, but. When the firemen set out, this there is tons of proof on the internet. I talked to some people last night, friends of mine, and they said, "Well, you know, you can't believe everything on the internet." I said, That's Absolutely true. Right. Only believe the documented stuff. Right. If they don't back it up with chapter and verse, then please don't believe it. But when the proof is there, uh, proof it beyond your wildest comprehension. Yeah. Don't turn a deaf ear to it, whether right. you're in the service or not. I got a good friend that's a retired uh, full bird colonel out of the Air Force, uh, flew in Vietnam, and uh, I sent him email after email after email, and he had sent me to Snoops. I guess Snoops is owned by the government. I don't know, but he'd send me to Snoops, and um, I don't care what Snoops says. I Well, I do care, but it, if it doesn't line up with the proof, um, then it's just Snoops' word against uh, right against undeniable evidence right ralph i got i gotta go ralph i hate to cut you off but we're we're really running short on time i appreciate your calling may i ask where are you calling from in texas because i'm from texas too believe i'm born in new york i've got a new york accent but i'm a texan at heart where where are you from i really i really hate to say to be honest with you okay uh i don't need the publicity here myself and um fair enough but um 
I've called before and shared it with y'all, but anyway, I, I people need to do their own research and prove to themselves and do it with an open mind. I agree. And not I agree. All right, uh, r- uh, uh, just not doing it. Ralph, do me a favor. Send me, if, if you haven't already done so, send me an uh, email to comments at libertytalkradio.com. I'd like it to be a walking billboard for Liberty Talk Radio. Give me your mailing address and a T-shirt size, and I'll be more than happy, happy to send it to you. Fair enough? Okay. All right, Fair thank enough. you for calling. All right, all right. You know, I, I want to do an entire program on 9-11 because I have some personal, uh, uh, n- not convictions, but uh, knowledge about personal stuff because, see, I'm in the respirator business, and the government was spouting about respirators and what they were doing, and guess what? It was all wrong. And, and by the way, and the, government, and, and the respirators are governed by government regulation. I can't tell. Hold on. You better write it down. What is she saying? Not now. Not now. Not now. Yeah, not now. Just, not not right now. Right. We, we don't have any time. <laughs> oh, I, I wish. But write things down. I can't. I, I can't uh, lip read people here. I got a whole bunch of people in the office here. Can you I, sign? We can sign. Yeah, to you, but no, I don't want she's your signs. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you gave me enough of those. Okay. Where now? I don't even write. You know, I want to close off the session by saying that yet yeah, our culture has changed. But let me let me give everyone a little bit of a test here. Uh, what do you think was one of the most significant uh, changes that we made in America that actually affected our culture, which have, in, in effect fa- affected the family unit and how the family unit exists? Well, I'm going to give you the answer because we're running out of time. Social Security. You see, before people, would, as they got older, they relied on their youngers to take care of them. Now we say, oh, goodbye, Dad, Mom, goodbye, Social Security. I'm moving to California, right? So, what was the second thing that had the most impact on, on the family structure? Mother's work. No, no, so someone just said mother's work. You're right. But you know what it was? Listen to this. It's very interesting. TV dinners. <laughs> TV, TV dinners? TV dinners. The TV dinner came out. It made mom unnecessary. Just <laughs> think about that. And now, what, what has made our interaction not only with our family, but with our friends unnecessary? In fact, the b- birds of smartphones. Just think of our culture and the way it's been changed. We're almost out of time. We're almost out of time, aren't we? You know? Well, folks, you have been listening to the University of Logic, Cristiano's Conservatory, correcting convoluted conversation. Folks, it's time for us to take back control of our government. Now before this bureaucratic, oversized, and self-serving federal government starves us of our property, our freedom, our rights, and our liberty. But to do this, we must shed conventional thinking regarding our political structure. We need to be revolutionaries in thought, dissidents in action. Only after we recognize what our government is doing to our freedom and our Constitution will we start taking it back. And this program was and is about that. Thank you for listening to Liberty Talk Radio. I'm Joe Cristiano. Stay well. Stay tuned.